What's good everybody and welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to draw and color a whirlpool. Now I'm going to start off showing you guys how to draw a whirlpool and then we're going to get to the coloring portion later. But in advance, here are all the supplies you're going to need for this video. So I'm using Canson Bristol paper, I'm using my HB pencil, and to color this I'm going to be using Copic markers. I'm going to be using B23, B26, B39, and C9, cool gray number 9. And I'm also going to be using a paint pen. I'm going to be using a white one for this video. So that's what you'll need to color, but we're going to put these away for now. But for now, let's get to drawing the whirlpool. So let's keep in mind that water doesn't have a definite shape because water is always moving in some direction. So to draw this whirlpool, I'm going to start off on this side and make sort of like a hill kind of shape. So this right there kind of marks the movement of the water. And now to draw like a little whirlpool, I'm going to make this the main subject of this drawing. So the whirlpool would be, so the way I like to draw a whirlpool is to make like a big hole. Because when you think about it, when a whirlpool spins, it kind of sinks whatever's in it to the bottom of the ocean. That kind of thing. Kind of like a drain when it's draining water out. Or a toilet when you flush it. So it makes sort of like a hole. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to make some sort of a shadow just to indicate that when I color this later there's gonna be shadow in this hole so yeah and then I'm gonna make like another wave behind it something similar to what I'm doing over here but instead it'll be behind it but just like this, it'll also have movement. So we're going to apply movement to this wave as well. Let me erase this real quick. Okay. And then on this circle, to make like a little swirling movement of water, we're actually going to come off of some part of the circle and make a line like this. So we're going to make lines just like this, but we're going to make them throughout just to help indicate the movement of the water. So let's start off on this part of the circle here. Make sort of like a swirling pattern, just like this. And then let's kind of start in the same area, like a little bit off, but like right about here. And then we're going to keep that swirling kind of line, but also follow the contours of the wave wave that we drew at first. Just like that. And let's do it on this side as well. And this time I'm actually going to follow the contours of this whole shape. Because it still works. Because when you think about it, let's say I move this line over here, it'd still be a curve. And we're also capturing the movement of the water at the same time, so it still works. And then let's do the same thing, but we're not going to see much of it because it goes off the page. And now we're onto this wave that's back here. We can also capture that movement as well. So let's make a few lines that also follow the contours, like so. So I'm going to start off the edge of the page and come this way. like so and then there's gonna be shadows here too because again this wave is behind the main wave so let me just uh, sketch in some minor shadows this way and then if you want to put like another wave over here just to help fill that negative space you can do that shadow here and then what I'm doing now is just uh, touching up some lines kind of confirming which lines I want to use when I go to color this thing 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good to me. I got all the shadows, I got all the contours that I need, and at this point, I think we're ready to color. So I'm gonna leave the sketch lines there, and I'm just gonna erase them to the point where they're barely visible. I'm not gonna erase them completely, but like we're gonna keep them on the page so that way we know what exactly we're coloring and where exactly the shadows are gonna go, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna grab my needed eraser and do just that. Of course the shadows might not be as visible on the camera as they do if you're doing this at home but we still know where they are kind of visually but now we're on to our coloring portion so I'm gonna grab my base color which is B23 and just color in literally everything so I'm gonna start with this back wave first and if you want you can actually use your marker and make strokes that follow the lines that we drew at first. Because you see how these line strokes are kind of matching the lines that we drew to help accent the movement of the water? That you can do with your Copic markers. Or any marker, whatever you have. But yeah, that's definitely something you can do. So now let me color in the hole. Now we can get this back waving. Okay, and see how I accented the movement of the water by using the marker? Again, that's something you don't have to do, but it kind of looks illustrious and looks beautiful when you think about it. But while you still have your base color, what you can do to help indicate the shadows is by layering. So here's one layer of marker. We're gonna use the same color and help indicate the shadows. So like we're kind of reestablishing where the shadows are with just our base color. It won't really do much, especially when it dries but we will be using this later to help blend the other colors. So we got shadows here, here, and along here as well. And then over here in the foreground, we can add shadows there. So I'm gonna just color those in with uh, different strokes actually, because since I captured the movement of the water by making similar strokes to the line work, then I can just go in, in a whole another direction and also layer at the same time. So we captured the shadows. They may disappear later when it dries, but we know where they are now. So now let's grab my mid-tone, which is B26, and just go over the shadowy parts. So this B26 is like a darker version of this B23 color but dark enough so that I can blend it together later. So I'm gonna apply this in some areas that don't require shadow. That way when I go to add my darker colors, it'll really start to define where the shadows are in the piece. So like there's some shadow right there. And then also on the contours like I did here. And let's get some in the foreground too. And then let's try to make some lines to help indicate the movements of the water. Kind of like um, remaking our initial lines when we did the sketching portion. So you don't have to remember every exact line that you make, but again, this is movement of the water and water doesn't have a definite shape. So you can really just place lines anywhere as long as they indicate the correct movement or at least the movement that you're going for. So let me just fill in this hole with this color. And then let me apply some movement over here to this wave. And some to this wave. Not much, but yeah. But now let's go in with one of our darker colors, which is B39. Well, one of them is B39. And I'm just gonna add 
this color to the actual shadows. So unlike what I did with the B26 and added it along the contours, we're not gonna apply this color to the contours, only to the shadows because it's one of our darkest colors. See how we got that shadow in and then there's some shadow right next to it so we can throw that in. And then we can add some shadows along the foreground. And then some shadows in this hole as well. That one we may have to add some darker shadows to but we can do that in a minute. But for now, while we still have the B39, let's actually darken the movement of the water too. So these movement lines, we can apply this B39. And then here, and then these back waves too. And yeah. So now let's stop for a minute and go backwards. So we're gonna use our B26 to blend out the B39. And so that way, all the colors really work together. Okay, so now that everything is blended, now what we can do is add shadows and everything to the main subject of the drawing, which would be the whirlpool. And that we can use our C9 for, because we already applied B39, but it doesn't look that dark compared to all the shadows that we added to the waves back here. So let's add C9 to this mix. Just apply that on to each edge of the hole. Then let's use B39 to help blend it. And then let's use B26 to blend it all together. So the base color that's here right now, we're not gonna see that anymore. So we want this hole to kind of be darker compared to everything else in the drawing. So let's cover that base color up with our B26, blend it together. And if you want to elevate the shade a little bit more, you can definitely do that. All you got to do is follow the same steps, just apply them into more areas. But with that being said, let's move on to adding some more accents to the movement of the water. So I'm going to use my paint pen now, but before I do, we're going to give that a little shake. Okay. So where will we be applying this paint pen? So we can apply it onto these movement lines, but we're not gonna overdo the paint pen a lot because there's a lot of movement lines within the drawing. We're not gonna apply this paint pen to every single movement line, just the ones that need it. So like over here in the foreground, we can apply this paint pen here. And then we can also come back to the foreground you know do the same thing so it's kind of like uh, soapy bubbles when you think about it but not exactly because what kind of ocean has soap in it and then we can add it to this next one over here here dot here too dot here and then we can add it to here as well and 
and really you can just scribble this. I should have said this in the beginning, but you, you don't have to be too precise with this paint pen line. Because you see I just scribbled this entire area here. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to be a perfectionist when it comes to that. But yeah, we can also add this to here. Um, thicken that line just a little bit, but also show some shadows. I know I didn't do that here, but we can do that here while we still have the chance. And then let's also add some over here. That way there's some balance in the drawing because you see I applied a lot of it over here. So let's provide like an equal amount to the other half of this drawing over here. So I already did that down here. So let's apply just a little bit more up here to the wave behind it. And then there's a lot of shadow over here in this area. So what I'm gonna do to help separate those shadows is to apply this paint pen, starting with the stopping point, like the contour that separates this wave from this wave. I'm gonna start there and just add some accents here. And then I'm also going to do that to the, the wave that's like the main subject of the drawing. So I'm going to help separate that out with just a few lines here in the middle. You know, because there's a lot of darkness over there. So let's try to get rid of some of that by doing this. And then a tiny amount over here. dot here, dot here, and dot here. So we're pretty much done at this point, but what I'm doing now is kind of, uh, since I have this white paint pen still, I'm just gonna fix up some lines because obviously I went outside the lines during the video, so I'm just using this paint pen to fix it up, but that's, that's also an option to you as an artist. If you're comfortable with going outside the lines, then you know, by all means, but I'm just going to fix up a few lines. No big deal. Not like you have to do this, but this is just like my preference or whatever. But yeah, but as you can see, I did leave out the sky. But if you do want to learn how to color the sky, I got two videos on how to draw four different kinds of skies. One is public here on YouTube. The other is exclusive on my Patreon. So link in the description to get to my Patreon. But the public video is available in my how to draw backgrounds and scenes playlist, which will pop up right here in the card. And there will be a link in the outro as well. But yeah, that's going to do it for my video. If you liked it, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't. And tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I got my nigga like Pat Kate.